Well, howdy guys and gals. So I'm going to attempt to show you how to make YouTube videos with a free app called InShot, which I have used since the beginning of my channel, about six years now. There are other free apps, and I know people kind of get used to the one they start with, and that's why I've stuck with this one. Seems to do everything that I need to do, and the reason why I stick with a free app on my phone is because it kind of keeps it simple. I take all of my footage with a phone and then it's I'm able to edit it anywhere I'm at, whether it be in a tent or in the boat or in a car or wherever. And I don't have to upload the footage onto a secondary device like a laptop or a computer. <clears throat> if you ever want to get fancier than what you've seen on my channel, then you do have to move up to something like uh, Photoshop or something like that. So just keep that in mind. But uh, I think just for the average kind of person that would watch my channel and wants to just chronicle their adventures uh, in shot, we'll get the job done. So let's get started. <clears throat> Okay, so you've seen a couple of things happen that you might not be aware of. I'll just start with the basics. There are going to be some folks inevitably that are going to see this and they're going to know some of these, but I'm really um, directing this instructional video at someone that's just never done anything like editing uh, footage together. So you see here, there's a few layers going on. I just pushed the button to show the different scenes that I have used to put this video together. The first five seconds there on the far left side on the bottom is just a blank. And in Photoshop, and I'm sorry, in InShot, you will you will have that option when you put it together. So <clears throat> I will try to show you that um, at some point in here, but I can't really do it with the scenes already put together, but that's just called a blank. <clears throat> then the second one is a seven second scene of wavy. And then the third scene is a five second scene of my truck in the water. And you notice that there's some text there. Now, I would call the text in this a second layer. The first layer would be your scenes on the bottom, and then you're going to start layering. Some professionals, you know, some people better than I am at this will probably have different terminology for this. So forgive me if, you know, this is not called layering, but I, I think it's something like that. You understand what I'm trying to say here. So you see, you know, I just clicked on that and that boxes in my text for my the title of my channel, Backwaters and Backroads. Now, you will notice that it gives you some options. I, I'm gonna I'm moving I'm moving this uh, toolbar around here, and you can see that you have sticker, text, detail, frame, keyframe, edit, so forth. Well, if I if I come up to the screen and I click on the little pencil, it's going to add, it's going to allow me to edit my my text. So let's say you want to use something else there. You would just put it in the bar here. You'd start typing it in. You might say wavy is spoiled which would be 100% true. Then you hit the, the check mark on the right-hand side there, and it would allow you to say that. Now, just put your thumb on the, on the text box, and you can make it bigger or smaller, you can see. There are some things you can do to that text. Let's say I want to edit it. So I'm going to... You see where it says A, big A and little a. I click on that and it gives me different fonts. Um, I've kind of honed in on a couple. I often use permanent marker on my channel, but I've also used uh, Pusab, I think is what 
that one is. Um, but I'll just kind of go through them and show you that there's all these different fonts. You know, you'll eventually find some some favorites and you'll stick with them or, you know. But I usually just go with uh, Permanent Marker or Pusab, I think is how I pronounce it. Now next to it is this, this like kaleidoscope, colored kaleidoscope right next to it. You click on that and you can change a few things about your font as well, or, or your text, I should say. So this is a, a color that I've I've honed in on. I've used it a lot, but I, I also use uh, white. And sometimes it's appropriate to use a, a solid background. You get a couple of options for that. Um, but the thing I would point out here is, let's say you're going to go with white. This would be the easiest color to use this, to explain this example. Up here you see text, border, shadow, label, opacity, like opaic. Opacity, I think would be how you pronounce that. Let's say I click on border, and I want my text to be a little more um, vibrant or, or standout-ish, right? It's asking me, it's saying, what color would you like the border to be? Well, if I click on black, black over white, you see it kind of stands out more, gives it a little more of a, I would consider it to be like a, a, a professional look to it. And then I go to shadow. Now, this is something I normally, I've only used recently, but it does give it, you see I'm moving around one of the settings and it's moving it left and right. So let's say I want to go all the way to the left and then the other one up and down. Let's say I want it to go all the way to the bottom. And then on the bottom here, it's asking me, I believe, just like how intense the shadow is going to be. So, you know, can play around with that. Now, labels. Um, this is something I don't do much of, but I guess, you know, you can frame them in with different things and kind of, you know, you're always trying, if you ever get really into, you know, wanting to do something with your channel, you're going to want to kind of brand your channel, like, in, you know, intentionally or just kind of inadvertently want to do things to your channel that stand out, that register with your viewers on some kind of level so that they know that they're watching your channel because there's just so much content out there. You know, you could maybe get to the point where every time they see that label around some text, they know who they're, who they're watching, right? You could, you, you could do this with thumbnails and stuff, which I will get to later in this video. So I don't use much of that. Then the opacity is, I believe just the kind of like, you can see I'm messing around with that and it just shows like the different, you know, goes all the way from disappearing to like, very vivid and so so that would be text now if you look up on the opposite side of the check mark there is an arrow pointing off to the left this is a really important thing to know so this will undo your edits you can keep clicking back until now here I've just done a lot of stuff right so I can push that arrow until it points the other direction telling me that this, that would be the last time you, you know, I really did a, an edit. Uh, you know, it just, it just means you can never really make a mistake. You can always back out of anything you've ever done, which frees you up to, to be, to play around and never feel like you're going to back yourself and paint yourself into a corner you can't get out of. So hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and check out of this and I'm going to keep playing the video until we come up with something else here. Okay, guys, as you've heard me say before, every adventure has to... Okay, so you notice that the music stopped playing. You see this line on the bottom here, this, uh, I guess I'd call it purple line below the, the scene line. If I click on music on the toolbar here, it's going to bring it up to the top. And if I click on the, the music line on the top here, it, it highlights it telling us that this is what you're focusing on. This is what you want to, this is what you're altering or editing at the moment, right? So in here, you notice that on the toolbar, you have music, you have effects, you have record. Uh, 
let's go and let's go ahead and edit. So you see that this was a song I used. And I only used 24.3 seconds of it. And it gave me the option to go for volume. For fit. Okay, I guess I'll try to explain this here. I'm trying to do it in such a way that the fade in is I'm gonna show you what the fade in is. So at the very beginning of the video is where the music starts. Notice that the music kind of fades in in volume. So listen closely. Okay, so I go back to my music editing, and my fade in is 2.8 seconds. Now let's go take a look at the fade out, just to so you understand this. Okay, guys, as you've heard me say before, every adventure has to come to an end. Okay, so in there, the fade out was 6.8 seconds. Now, that's a detail that you certainly don't have to use, but I have learned that that's one of the little quality things that people do recognize that gives a, a video a higher, a, a higher quality. A lot of this stuff I have discovered registers with the viewer on almost like a subconscious level. They don't entirely under you know understand why they are sensing this is a better built better quality video with more work put into it if uh but this would be one of them just one of many that if i didn't put those fade ins in and out on the music part of that um it would have abruptly have stopped in the volume and it would have been kind of jarring let me see if i can show you an example so i'm going to go back to edit and i'm going to take the fade out completely out and let's let's just listen to what that sounds like okay guys as you've heard me say before every adventure has to come to an end eventually so you notice that like it didn't fade out it just kind of abruptly stopped let's do that again okay guys as you've heard me say before every adventure has to come to an end eventually and just you know the viewer notices it now i'm going to go ahead and back out of that as you've heard me say before let's listen to it with the fade out Okay, guys, as you've heard me say before, every adventure has to come to an end. Of that just sounds better, doesn't it? Okay, so let's keep tooling along. I'm just uh, moving the timeline around, along here until something starts up again. Now I can see that something's feeding in, which would be a music again, because I recognize that line below the scene feed. Let's listen. An adventure left in this one, so stay tuned. Okay, so you heard that the music faded in. Now, here's another thing to point out. I'm going to click on the music on the toolbar. Do you see these on the scene line, on the blue line? It says 100%, 100%, 100%, right? Well, I'm looking through here. Now, this happens to be an example where I did not mess with the, uh, the volume of what's going on in the scenes, but let me show you what would happen if I did. So if I click on this scene, it brings up this bar here. Let's say that I, there was something going on in that scene that I just didn't want to be heard. Some You'll kind of get a sense of when this is appropriate or when it works and when it doesn't. There's really no hard, fast rule about it, but I would just drop this out to zero. You saw that little line there and I click I click it. I'm coming into this. You're left in this one, so stay tuned. Okay, so you notice that you notice that the, you know all the volume was out of that scene. And all I could hear was music. Now I'll, I'll go ahead and back out of my edit there, and we'll listen to it with with it left in. In this one, so stay tuned. We gotta move, move. So I just made a judgment call there and decided I was going to leave the volume in. Sometimes you can just drop it down to 50% or 20%. You know, you can play around with that. It's a detail that's, uh, 
you know, just gives you your own, it, it's a way to work on your own style. Okay, so let's keep going here. I see some, okay, so you see down here, I'm moving the, uh, the scene line around. And I see two lines down there at the bottom. I see the purple line, which I know is music. And I see a green line coming. And that is some more text. Okay, so that's that's the same. If I click on text or T up there on the toolbar, it'll show me this. And if I if I wanted to edit it, I would put I would click on it, and it would highlight it again, just like the the backwaters and backroads text that you saw at the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to mess with this one. I'm just going to click out of it, and I'm going to keep going down the timeline here. And there's some more text. Now you notice. Here, I'll go ahead and play this once to show you. So, in the mouth of the marina here for one last time, at least for this year. So you notice on that text, it, it comes in to the scene in a different way. Let's watch it one more time. In the mouth of the marina here for one last time, at least for this year. So what that is, if I click on text on the toolbar, and I click on it, and I click on edit, do you see this little ball that's moving back and forth? That I call that the Doppler effect. There's probably a different word for it, but I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna bring me up to the screen. And it's showing me what it's doing with that text. Now I have many, many different options here. I could I could have I could just say basic without anything. And it's not going to have any sort of fade in or fade out of any sort. Let's just look at that. Leaving the mouth of the marina here for one last time, at least for this year. Now you can certainly do that. Um, there are people who don't put any effects on their text at all, and you know that's fine. I know Bald and Bankrupt. You know he's one of the biggest channels on YouTube, and he uses almost no special editing effects at all, and that's just kind of part of his appeal, I suppose. Um, I like to use some, you know, but I don't like to get overboard with it because it starts to overpower the content. But in this case, I'm going to click Edit, and I'm going to go back to Doppler. Now, I'm just going to start going around this toolbar a little bit, the different offerings for the way text can come in and off the screen, just to show you some examples. So if I click on the fade, it just has the basic fade. You can see it up there on the screen. If I click the next one, it'll do, comes in, comes out. If I wanted it to come in and go out, okay, I click on the next one. What if I wanted to come in from the side? You know, you kind of get the idea, right? These single letter ones are a little different. They can come in like that, like a, like a keyboard, I suppose. Some I've used, I use, you know, I use different ones. Sometimes I use that one. I've used that one. You know, so you get lots of options. Now, another thing to consider is you notice there's the in and the out and the loop. So what it's asking you is how do how do you want it to come in? So it, in this case, I just went back up to the fade in. Now, if I click over to out, it's going to say how do you want it to go out? Now it's doing it's doing fade in in and out at the moment, but what it's asking specifically, do you want it to, the, the text to go to leave the screen in a different way it came in? So let's just say I, I click this. So it, it, it now it fades in and it kind of peters out to the top, right? Or it comes in and it fades out, okay? I like to just match them up. I never do different ones, you know, but if, uh, you know. So you kind of get an idea there. I don't use the loop. You know, maybe you can tell me about that, but... Here's one more thing I suppose I'll point out really quick. You have up on the top there the big A, little a, and then you have the kaleidoscope color on one side. Then you have this these lines on the other. If I click on that, if you had a couple of rows of text, it's going to give you these different ways to um, present it. So you can see that like you might have all three text lines lined up the, on one side or, or you know, uh, it's not going to show me on this one necessarily because I only have one line of text, but then you have these bars here to give it different sizes. Now there's, you can just drag that along with your fingers too up on the screen. 
you have you can you can you can have it uh the letters be far apart and then you can also now this would be if you had more than one line of text um, i'm going to go ahead and back out of those changes there and we're going to continue I'm I'm going to go ahead and pause it and just keep looking around here. Okay, now here's a new one. You notice that there's a blue line coming on the bottom. What is that? Let's find out. That slip, guys, for $95 for a month. And if you want a covered slip, it's $300. Okay, so you notice that a picture faded in and out. Let's just watch that one more time. That slip, guys, for ninety-five dollars for a month. And if you want a covered slip, it's three hundred. <clears throat> this is probably the one of the most valuable tools that you can learn to use in this editing app that will give your video quality. Let me explain. So up here on the toolbar is PIP. Now I don't know what that stands for. I call it Picture Inside Picture. Maybe that's what it stands for. Kind of makes sense. I'm going to click on it, and you'll see that up on the <clears throat> up on the lines now, top line, is our picture inside picture. Now I'm going to click on that so it knows. See, you can't whatever part of the video you are editing and working on, it's always going to highlight it like that. Okay, so you have to kind of keep that in mind. It'll come in time. You'll be able to do that just without even thinking about it, but just initially you might get a little, you know, turned around because you want to be working on a scene, you want to be working on text, and you're like, you have to just take your time because the program only can do one thing at a time. So in this case, it's highlighting the picture inside picture. Now, in this, in this, you can, you can drag these arrows. I could make it, I could make it stay that picture stay inside the scene. I call it like overriding the main scene, you know, as short or as long as, as I want, right? Um, I usually try to follow what I'm saying in, in the scene to, you know, if I'm talking about the slip, for example, in the scene, then I want it to go as long as, you know, keep in mind that a viewer needs to have enough time to know what you're talking about. So, you know, if, if I only put this on the screen for, you know, two seconds, they might miss it. It's just going to pop up for a second. It's going to go away. They're like, what just happened? You know, usually just as a rough rule, five seconds is, is good. It's not too long, but it's long enough to kind of tell the viewer that you want them to pay attention to something else other than what's happening on the main screen, if that makes sense. Now, just like text, picture inside picture has fade ins and fade outs, which give you uh, quality. I just call it quality. So I'm going to press on this animation here. And it's going to give me these different options <clears throat> on how to, how it wants, I want it to fade in and out of the scenes. So. I always just go with the basics. I um, I like the fade. You notice that I push fade, but you can also have ninety-five dollars. You can also have a comma. Ninety-five dollars. You could have ninety-five dollars. Ninety-five dollars. Uh, you'll get sick of your own voice when you're making videos. Trust me. <clears throat> um, you can also change the the length of a of a fade in. Um, I usually just go with the pre, the one that, ninety-five dollars. you know, the, the program kind of judges the best length of fade in and fade out based on the length of the picture inside picture scene. And, uh, I just trust that occasionally I have messed around with it just cause for some, you know, strange reason, but typically you can just kind of trust they're going to give you the proper fade in and fade out length, depending on your scene. So, <clears throat> so, uh. I'm going to go ahead and click out of this and I'm going to back out of the edits and just leave it alone for now. Now, one more thing to, to, 
to think about, excuse me, with this is you see this little up, up above the check mark is a box. I'm going to click on it right now. And you see that it's, it's moving, it's changing sizes. So one version has it entirely on the screen, obviously. The other version, you can, you know, it kind of depends again on your style and maybe what you're trying to convey, whether you are, something's happening on the main screen that you don't want to have completely overridden by a picture inside of a picture. You know, there'll be, there'll be reasons for that, you know, down the line that you'll kind of just understand later. And, you know, you might just want your, your picture inside picture just take up a small part, right? So you just, Pick the size there, and then you would you would have it do that. So let's just see how that would look. To that slip, guys, for ninety five dollars for a month. And if you want a covered slip, it's three hundred. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and back out of that edit. Uh, actually, I'll back out of that edit some more. Huh. <laughs> uh, let's see, it's not lit. Oh, how many how many versions of this? I'll back out until I think that would be all of it. So let's make sure it's the same now. Slip, guys, for $95 for a month. And if you want a covered slip, it's $300. Okay. So there's a few more things you can do with pictures inside pictures. You can, let's see, if I clicked edit, it would give me some options for for framing it in different colors. You can use this for thumbnails also. Uh, that's something you could just play around with, um, especially if it came in in this version, not the full uh, screen. You might want to have it you know, outlined in yellow or something for some reason, just as a style reason. So keep going, keep that in mind. Something you can play around with. Okay. Let's, just, let's, let's keep going here. Those are phenomenal prices. Okay, guys, so we are continuing on. And how about if I just keep playing the video forward and see if anything new comes up that I can explain to you guys. So you're staying... <clears throat> okay. Um, I've already shown you guys how to do the text how to taper it in and out, different ways it comes onto the screen. I'm just gonna scan ahead here on the timeline. What's coming up here? Okay, so we have another picture inside of a picture. I'll just push on that so it shows it down on the timeline here. I'll click on it if I wanted to edit it, but we don't. So I'm gonna check out of it, check box. And keep going down the timeline here. We've got some text on the screen. And so maybe I haven't shown you guys this yet. Uh, on the timeline down here, you see these boxes between the scenes. If I take my thumb and I click on it, it pulls up this transition. And there are different ways to transition scenes so if it was if I pushed on basic here it would have none if I I, I like to use this fade I use the the fade a lot and you can you can adjust the the speed of the fade and that that does have, have an application to it so let me give an example see how slow it did it on the, on the 2.5 now, depending on how long the scene is, InShot will give you different amounts of time to adjust that. So, I'm trying to get it to slide here. <laughs> For some reason, it's not letting me. There we go. You know, I can, I can bring it all the way down to next to nothing, a really quick one. I, about a second is usually a good speed couldn't hear me over the volume there usually a one second fade transition is a good happy medium for the for the transition let me show you this one it's at one second right now I appreciate it. so you saw that was just nice and smooth 
Now, one that I sometimes use, uh, this always this is another style thing where you'll just decide which one works for you, which one kind of fits your style. Sometimes I use this circle. Now I use that one when I'm going into Wavy's treat treat link commercials. Um, it's just a style thing, but sometimes it it helps to just differentiate, and over time your viewers will kind of get the will start to know what's coming, depending on the transitions and stuff like that. If that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll X out of those changes there. I'll X out until, okay, got them all out there. Going to keep going down the timeline here. Okay, now I have two things going on. If you see down here on the timeline, I have a blue line. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a blue line and a green line. Now that is going to be a picture inside of a picture and text. Here, see that? Now just to show you guys how I did that, I'm going to... I'm going to click into picture inside of a picture to show you guys where that is on the timeline. And then if I clicked out of that and I clicked on to text, it'll show where it's at on the timeline. And I used, if you notice how I came, had it come down in and back out. So let's watch that. It is really pretty, especially when you're coming in here on the entrance, it's got these clips. And so you, you that's two layers right there. Two different layers on the timeline. A picture inside of a picture and then text inside the picture. So uh, you can almost do anything. You can the sky's the limit on how many layers you can put inside of a um, inside of a scene. I'm trying to think how many I've ever done. I think there might be some times where three or four, Maybe we'll get an example in this video. I'll just keep going on the timeline here. We have another transition. I'm going in. I'm seeing a line coming up. I think it's probably text. There it is. Eagle Creek launch. Going back out. Another transition. Now I'm trying to look for something that I haven't shown you guys before. I think I know something coming up. Okay, so we have, on the timeline down here, I, I can tell with the purple line, that's music and text. Let's watch it. The bag one here on the anchor. So I had the music fade in, and I had text. Now, keep going here. This is, a, this is another style thing I... On for so I can't remember why, but you'll notice I just kind of have the music fade out here at some point. So we've got a couple of barges. Okay, so typically what I try to do um, is not have music playing while I'm talking or somebody's talking in the scene. If it's just a little bit of here and there, like me talking to Wavy for a couple words or a, a minute, you know, or for a few seconds then I don't have to stop the music. But if it goes into a scene where there's a lot of talking, um, normally what happens is the music competes with the dialogue and it kind of mm, irritates people. I, had, I learned that the hard way. I made a, a really good Scooter Tramp Scotty interview video a few years ago, back before I really knew what I was doing and I put way too much music over it and I made it too loud. And I didn't have... A wireless mic yet and so I was uh, so people couldn't hear what he was saying and it was really frustrating which is too bad because that's you know would be an example of a video that gets got a lot of views on my channel so it pays to really you know put some time in and get it right if you want your your videos to have longevity so just to reiterate this I have music going and then I can a scenes coming in where I'm gonna talk for a while and I just let it let the music filter out Barges, or we think it's a couple. It could be one pushing. Okay, something I thought of here that I can I can show you is if if you're not using wireless mics, which you know I only do when I'm interviewing people. I I don't. Uh, the, you, if you have a decent camera, 
with a decent audio, it'll if your if your phone is up near you while you're taking the scene, um, it'll pick up your voice pretty easily. Um, in this one, you know, I'm battling the sound of the outboard motor, but it's it's okay. I mean, it's it I, you know, I think you can still understand what I'm saying. But uh, audio, you know, can be tricky to get it right. <clears throat> Um, but one thing I'll show you is I'm going to click on music up here on the toolbar. And so my scene line is now blue and I'm going to click on that scene. It's going to bring it up. Now, let's just say in that scene, we, uh, we couldn't hear the audio. We couldn't hear the me or whoever's talking very well. One option you have is you can increase the volume. So you'll see on the, um, on the volume line here, I'm at 100%, but I can, I, can bring all, I can bring it all the way up to 200%. Now, that sometimes works, if especially if there's no background noise. If the outboard motor wasn't in the scene, then it would, and we couldn't hear the audio, it would work really well. But since there's it, there's a there's an outboard, for example, noise, it's bringing up all the volume for all the scene, and it really doesn't help much to go from 100% to 200%. Sometimes in between, you know, sometimes you can just kind of fiddle with it and get get something where you can hear the audio better. But now, something I've not really played much with is down here on the corners, you'll see denoise and extract audio. Now, I've never used extract audio. I honestly don't know exactly what it does. I, I can guess, but I've just never had a reason to use it. Maybe at some point I will. I'll play around with it. But it's one of those options I've just never fiddled with. Now, the denoise I have, <clears throat> let's do a little experiment together here. First, let's listen to the beginning of this scene at 200% volume. So we've got a couple of barges, or we think it's a couple. It could be one pushing, uh, you know, two or Okay. Let's go back into that, <clears throat> and let's just change it back down to 100%. And let's let's see if we can hear a difference. So we've got a couple of barges. Are we think now to my ear, the one just having it at normal 100% volume is is fine. Actually, better than 200% because it. You know, if you have scenes that have different volume levels, if it's too drastic, it can sometimes um, jolt the viewer also. You got to remember that a lot of people are watching your videos on TVs, some of them are on computers, some of them are on the phone, you know, and it's just different volumes and different, uh, you know, different sound systems. And so as much as you can, now this is just, you know, we're not talking perfect here, but uh, we're not making a the next Star Wars movie or something, but... You know, if you want to put a little time into trying to even out your audio levels throughout the video, it usually it usually adds some quality to the video as well. Now, let's let's try the denoise just to see what happens. So, I'm going to click on that scene and I'm going to push a denoise down there in the corner and I'm going to click it and let's listen to this and see what it does. Okay, um, I'm not sure if I, I heard a difference, so I'm going to go back and let's let's click out of denoise and listen to that again and see if we can hear any difference. So yeah, okay, I do. Um, so the denoise actually took some of the sound of the the outboard out. That's that's a good thing to know. That I and you know I've used it before, but I've never had a lot of luck with it. But in this particular scene, the way the audio's um, coming through it it actually worked good so in the future if i came across this again i would use that denoise option so so cool okay let's uh let's keep going down the timeline here i know that there's going to be something that's going to come up that i haven't shown you yet so we're just going through some scenes here um okay i have a picture inside of a picture and going through some more scenes and okay, I have some audio. And uh, more scenes. Okay, cutting to driving. Now we have some picture inside of a picture with text. 
you see so I'm showing the the launch ramp and I'm telling what launch ramp it is you got to remember this you know try to always just kind of have the attitude or assumption that people need to be exposed you don't want to overdo it, you know, but you want to explain to your viewer what's going on. That's a that's the art of storytelling. Um, of course, you don't want to point out obvious things, you know, but like if there's something that just doesn't make a lot of sense, you know, or it's it's a it's a drastic transition from something, you know, it sometimes helps to put some text on the screen to explain to people that it's the next day or you know you've you've changed locations or something like that. So. Okay, so we got some more scenes going on. Got some wavy gravy. Um, I believe that's that line down there is music. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you something here. Okay, so I'm going to play this out first, and then I'm going to explain to you what this is. This is... Uh, this is a, I put sometimes, if you watch my channel, you know, sometimes I put wavy street link commercials in and I'll just play this out and then I'll explain to you a couple things. Over here, so stay tuned guys. Hi, my name is Wavy Gravy and I like treats. Thanks. Okay, <clears throat> so a couple things I did there. I used the circle. Now, this is a style thing. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just explaining to you, you know, a couple things that you might, might give you some ideas for when you're creating your own style with your own videos. I, I you know, I usually use fade in transitions. You saw that one right there. And then I'm going into a commercial. I use almost exclusively. Sometimes I use that circle if I'm going from one day to the next, just to kind of also differentiate to folks that, that, uh, you know, a whole entire, you know, day is lapsed, you know, or something like that. And I might put some text into a blank five or six second long blank scene, you know, that says like the next day or something like that. Right. So, you know, just remember you're telling a story to your viewer and they don't always know what's going on. Sometimes, you know, try to watch it when you're watching back on your video, you know, try to have a, a, a perspective you can shift into that is like the the, um, the viewer's perspective, you know. So you're putting on many hats. You're, you're, a, you're a creator of the video, you're an editor of the video, and you're a viewer of the video. And if you can kind of try to keep those separate, it helps a lot, if that makes sense. And that applies, you know, I learned that when I was in college um, studying writing. It's, you know, it's, it's, a lot of this stuff is very similar to write, trying to write a story or trying to write an article or a book or something like that. So, <clears throat> okay. So another thing that I'll point out to you is down here on the, well, first I'll, I'll point out the music. So, um, this song I got from the free library in InShot, uh, but I've claimed it. Don't go using it. <laughs> Cause it's mine. I use it exclusively. I mean, I'm just joking here, of course. But you know, I use this song exclusively for my my Wavy's Treat Link Link channels. I'll let you listen to it one more time. Stay tuned, guys. Hi, my name is Wavy Gravy. Okay, now you hear me talking, right? You know, it's well, no, it's not me. It's Wavy. It's Wavy talking. Now, how how did I do that? So, if I click on music you will see up here in the corner i have music effects and we'll get to that in a minute and record now that red line at the top you see i have two layers i have music in the purple and then i have record in the red and in this particular commercial you know wavy that i did for wavy here I wanted her to sound like she's far away, so I had to play with that for a couple of in a couple ways. So I'm gonna click on it. I'll push edit. Hi, my name is Wavy Gravy, I, and I like treats. Thanks. So you see that I, I brought it down to 45% volume to for uh, to try to make it sound like she's way over at the truck, right? And also I kind of stayed back away from the phone when I recorded it. So, um, 
and I, let me give you an example. Actually, I don't think I can. <laughs> well, I, the way we're doing this is is kind of it's very meta, and it's kind of confusing because <laughs> I'm I'm both. Uh, well, you know what I mean. I'm not going to get too philosophical, but I've got a couple layers going on here. I'm I'm filming something that I've filmed, if that makes sense. So I have like I have to try to keep this straight here. But if I was to, I'll cl click back out of this. Let's say I wanted to do a voiceover. So let me let me try to find a good example. <clears throat> so going through here, I have some text. Oh, okay. Well, I'll get back to that in a minute about recording um, audio. Okay. So you'll see I have a I have a transition coming here, and I used a GIF. So, I'll sh you know, just in case you don't know what a GIF is, let me show you. Okay, so this GIF is about a two-second long. You know, some GIFs are longer and shorter, or whatever. But this particular one, it's uh, it's Steve Martin juggling cats in the movie The Jerk from the '80s, and. Uh, I just love it, you know, I just, it's <laughs> one of my favorite movies. And so I, I found this GIF to try to explain how it's going to be tricky to load the boat by myself. And I had to double up on the GIF, and let me show you, well, you can see it down here. You see on the timeline, I, it comes out, it goes through the circle coming out of the, the commercial. It goes into the GIF, but the GIF is only like a second and a half long, and so I doubled up on it. I, I melded them together without a transition. If you see right where the line is there, you see a pencil, you know, or like a line, right? That's There's no fade, no transition fade, nothing. And I butted up the GIF twice to make it go three seconds long. So, watch. So, if you found, you know, you find something clever like that, but you want it longer, you can always kind of sew them together with a little bit of, you know, timing it right, you know, so the end of the gift goes in the beginning of it again type thing, if that makes sense. Now, you heard the, uh, you heard the wolf, right? So if I click over in music and I go to effects, I clicked on effects. Now, InShot gives you a bunch of free effects. If you get the InShot Pro, you can get even more of everything we're seeing and I'll leave that to you as to, you know, whether you'd want to get the pro version of it or not. I'll just tell you my own kind of opinion and experience with it is that I was actually given the pro model, uh, I guess the pro version, um, you know, years ago on my, on the, an old phone that I used to use. And so I got to use it for a while and there were a couple of things that I thought were nice to have, but it's, it's very little. Really, it's just kind of a, a lot more of the same. And and if you're just making basic uh, adventure videos like you might see on my channel, you're not going to need anything more than the free version. The free version does um, make you... Well, I'll have to explain that to you. I'll, I'll, I'll make a mental note and I'll come back to that. It, you have to watch some advertisements in order to have the free version, but it's no big deal. Okay, so we're here in the in the effects. Now, that wolf is in the animals. I'm clicking on animals. You know, we have we have a bear. Oh boy, we have a cow. <laughs> okay, and you notice when you click on it, it says use. Now, if I wanted to let's say replace the wolf howl with the cow i would just click on use there actually i'll just do it for you and then we'll back out of it so i'm going to click on use now it's going to give us another layer up here and it's going to start letting us um um it won't let you go farther than the the sound bite so this one's looks like it's you know, I don't know, three seconds long or something like that. You can bring it down to two seconds, but you can't. If you wanted it to go six seconds, you'd have to double up the the the, the length, just like I was talking about the GIF. So you'd have to, you know, let's say you wanted the cow to go six seconds. You'd you'd go back into effects. You go back into animals. You go to cow again, and you you click on it again, and it give you just another layer. Now, if we play this, it'll sound funny because it's 
you know, it's going up against music and the wolf and all. Let's just listen to it for, for fun. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> obviously <laughs> didn't work, so I'll take those out. But uh, so, yeah, you've got, you know, you've got different effects you can use, you know, for humor, for transitions, for, um, you know, I'll just go ahead and get rid of these cows here. So you click on them, you just click delete. You see me click and delete, getting rid of them. Now, you know, if you wanted, uh, we'll go into effects one more time. You know, you got popular, it's, it's endless. I mean, if you have, here's one I use sometimes. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can find it. I have to remember where it is here. Uh, let's see, where is it at? Oh, magic. Sometimes I use this one. So I'm going to click out of this now. Uh, yeah, you probably get the point on that. So click back out. So what you saw, you know, we'll just go by this one more time here. We have, we have the circle feed in, we have music. And we have the recording, me recording, actually, Wavy recording her voice in that scene. Watch it one more time. Hi, my name is Wavy Gravy, and I like treats. Thanks. Okay, so... Hopefully, I explained to you guys everything that happened in that, you know, 10 seconds or so. There was, you know, a few things. There was text. There was doubling up on the GIF if you need to. Sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes the GIFs are long enough. Um, there's different kinds of transitions. Circle. Fade. There's music. There's the voiceover. So... That's a pretty dense 10 seconds there in the video, but I just took it one layer at a time and uh, put it together. It's good practice. You'll you'll get to a point if you keep at it, you'll be doing this stuff in your sleep, I promise. So I know it can be a little frustrating at first, but you'll get it. Okay, so we're, we're going here. I can tell we have music going. I'll just play it for a minute. Now here's something I'll point out. So... This this scene where I was loading the boat, I put my camera on a stand on the front of my boat, and I filmed probably a good solid 10 minutes of footage with no editing because, well, I should, I, without stopping the camera, I should say, because I knew I was going to come back and edit it, okay? So... Sometimes, you know, this is this this works, you know, sometimes it's a good idea. So, especially if you're, you know, you're you're by yourself, people aren't someone else isn't filming you and you just kind of got to do it do it all, you know. Um, you can set up your camera, you can walk in front of your camera. You know, people like non-point of view footage where um, you know, I, I have a lot of point of view footage in my videos because it's always just me. And so a lot of times I'm behind the camera or I'm just right in front of the camera holding the camera out from myself. You know, you see a lot of that. Um, and I don't have a lot of non-point of view footage. But I do have some coming up in this video here. And I know this is kind of obvious in some ways, but at the same time it's, it's something just to kind of get it. You know, realize that this is how you would do this. Is that you would take, you know, 10 minutes of footage, let's say, I think that's probably what I did here. But when I came back to make this video, I edited it down, you know, pretty aggressively because um, no one wants to just sit there and watch, you know, the same footage. Like, you know, I'll just say this about editing in general is that uh, depending on your audience, depending on your viewers, this is where knowing who your viewers are can be valuable. Now, to a certain extent, I know... I know kind of my demographic of viewers. Um, you could find that in your YouTube analytics, and maybe I'll make a second video to, to explain some of that. If if this is popular, people take to this video and they get something out of it, I might make another one 
to kind of talk about maybe the back the back end of YouTube, um, how you build the back of your videos and stuff like that. But you know, anyways, in your analytics, it'll it'll tell you the age demographics, the gender of your viewers. Now, my channel is does not surprise me. You know, it's it's almost con- exclusively male. I think ninety six percent of my viewers are male, and most of them are about forty years old on up. So 40 up to, you know, 100, okay? I do have, a few, you know, 20%, let's say, that are like, you know, in their 20s and 30s. But uh, I, have an old, I, have, I have a demographic very similar to myself. Now, what one thing that tells me is that my, my viewers tend to have a longer attention span than younger people. So in the age of TikTok and, you know, the kids, let's just call them the kids today... They have very low attention spans, and you and your your editing has to be very um, quick. You know, watch a <clears throat> watch a video on YouTube just just to subject yourself to it. Uh, that's kind of geared towards younger people, and or just go watch something on TikTok, which you know, be warned. But <clears throat> it's uh, the, the editing can be a, just lightning fast. Now, I don't we don't, I don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. You know, I I mean I don't know what kind of videos you're going to be making, but I'm just going to assume you're if you're watching this and you're watching my channel, you 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 have an interest in making, you know, chronicling your adventures, right? And so <clears throat> um typically people who would watch that kind of stuff, you know, will have a longer attention span <clears throat> where you can have scenes that are, you know, 10 seconds long, 20 seconds long, you know, that, You'll, you'll get a feel of it later. I know I'm kind of being long-winded here, but it, it, I'm trying to save you a little time because when I first started my channel, I did not fully understand this. And if you look back on, say, the Shanty Bo Beagle adventure when I first, you know, pretty much started making videos, I I had, my scenes were too long. You know, I would, I would you know, let's say I had the scene of, let me go back here. Let's say this scene right here. This scene of my truck I'm showing you guys, you know, the truck in the water, and it's, it is, it's about four, four and a half seconds long. Now, let's watch that. Okay, so I, you know, just by instinct here, you know, understood or realized that that's all the time it took for the viewer to kind of know what is being conveyed in this scene, okay? You only needed about four to five seconds to understand that, okay, that's my truck in the water, okay? Now, when I first started, I might have lingered on this scene for 10 seconds, okay? Um, and it would have been too long. And it, you have you always have the danger of losing your viewer because of that, because they just get bored, or they just, something subconsciously, you know, tells them to click out of it because they're antsy or whatever. I mean, this is, gets into that whole, you know, attention span thing again. And luckily, I'll just assume your viewers are very similar to mine. Typically have a longer extension attention span. If my audience was like, you know, 15 years old, I would have I would have had to cut the scene down to like two seconds. Okay, it would have been a flash scene. I probably wouldn't even they wouldn't be watching my channel to begin with. So, <clears throat> um, and another thing I'm going to point out. I'm glad I came back to this scene because I want to point this out. Let's watch it one more time here, and I want to show you something. Okay, in this scene here, you notice that I'm I'm panning the camera. I'm keeping the camera moving. I've heard that called the Ken Burns effect. Ken Burns is a documentary filmmaker that do, used to might still make documentaries for mostly for public television. You know, famous for like the Civil War and stuff like that. And he, I think, you know, kind of came up with this you know, tool, let's call it a filming tactic, a filming trick where you never let the, the camera stop moving. Okay. It just keeps the, it's just one more way to keep the viewer engaged. Um, so if I did this scene and I was just lingering on the truck for five seconds without moving the camera, it would still work. But I think, you know, it gives it a little more Quality. Let's just keep using that word. It gives it a little more quality to just keep the the scenes moving a little bit. So let's just watch that one more time. Stay. I'm gonna make. Now you see that I could have easily have just made that scene, you know, not moving on the truck. So 
hopefully that makes sense. You know, it's just another thing you can, you know, you're, you might come up with a, a unique style. They might someday name something after you, you know, that <laughs> use your name. You know, maybe they'll use me, the Brenta Nets, Nets effect or something like that. Who knows, you know, but so, okay, let's, let's keep going here. Let me see if there's anything else. Oh, okay. I was talking about how I edited this scene down. Let, let's watch, let's watch this. Okay, so you see up here, I, I made a couple of five, six, seven second scenes to cut out, you know, some of the travel time of my boat slowly going to the trailer. Um, I can't remember why, but when I was putting this video together, I decided to kind of leave this one long, longer than I normally would. It's, it's uh, let's see, it's, it's at 742 on the timeline, and it goes all the way to 802, so what is that? That's like 20 seconds long. <clears throat> um, I probably could have cut this one down more. I could have maybe put another jump cut right here. If I was going to do that, here's a trick I'll show you. So up here on the toolbar, you see this, this tool called Split. If I click on Split, you notice that now it gives me a, a transition point between scenes. So I can click on it. I can give it a fade. And then if I wanted to shorten the the um, the second one that I just made, right, I would just start dragging this line and shortening up this scene, okay? And I could do it this, I could click on this one, and I could shorten up this scene. So I was just talking about how, for some reason, I realized, you know, I made that scene 20 seconds long without a, a transition. Well, let's look now that I put a transition in, okay? So, coming in, coming in, and normally this would have been 20 seconds. Here, okay, so this split tool right here is can be very valuable. Once you once you learn how to use it, it's it can be very, it can be um, it can save you a lot of time. There is other ways to to edit down scenes, but you have to block them off. Like you know, another way to do it would be I just take a scene, and I would I'd, I'd highlight it right. So here it is down the timeline. Now I've broken my scenes up into individual boxes by just holding my thumb down and letting it click into that and then if I if I click this pre-cut it brings well look at that I mean this scene it shows how long it was that little sliver right there you can't even see the how long it is really um but this scene was uh well I can't even tell it was a very long scene because I left the phone the phone go for 10 minutes at least, okay? So I'm gonna click back out of that. But there are there are several ways to edit your individual scenes, but one of the one of the most time effective ways they gave you in this app is the split. Okay, so always remember the split there. In fact, let's just I probably should have done this, you know, earlier in the video, but let's just go down the list on the toolbar here from the left. So we have canvas. Now canvas is um, here, I'm going to go, I'll go, uh, well, here, okay, <laughs> I'll come back to that. I'm sorry, guys, I'm a little round. But you notice I have some non-point of view footage here, right? Because I have the camera going. This is a style thing. I actually, you know, walked out in front of the camera. I wanted to show folks, you know, loading up the boat. Um, and so I just kind of let it go, and I just edited it down, you know, aggressively. You can see all the different scenes here in about five-second, you know, pieces. And then I, you know, finally grabbed the camera. Well... And then I have another Ken Burns effect coming. Watch. Wow. See how effective that so is? So I was hoping to get all this done. Before. Okay. So let's go down the toolbar. If I clicked Canvas, uh, you notice down here that it's giving you a different... Uh, We'll see, man. I, I I know there's a term for this, and people are probably screaming it at their, you know, <laughs> TVs right now as they're watching this. But it just gives you different formats, and with the one you see that in now, it's in 16.9. That's that little emblem on the top. That that means that YouTube uses this format, and then when you're building your video, you want to use this format now. 
It's very important if you when you do when you're filming when you're you know when you're actually taking your footage that you need to hold your camera sideways. Now I know this is very basic, and there are going to be people who already know this, but it's very important when it comes to editing later what direction you you hold your phone. So almost all of my footage you see in my videos is me holding my phone sideways. Okay. That, and that puts the footage in this mode, this frame mode. Okay. If I was making a YouTube short, that's in that, that's footage typically is taken when your phone is upright, when it's up and down, it goes into, they call it TikTok on here. And if I clicked it like this, you'll notice it's actually, it doesn't work because it's the footage I took was in, let's just call it YouTube mode, side by side, you know, sideways mode. Um, and when I try to take my footage and put it into upright mode, it doesn't work. Now, there is ways to kind of play with it. Sometimes you have some scene that you just absolutely want to use and it's, you know, it's taken in the wrong mode on your phone. You can play around with these different um options down here and sometimes you can get one to kind of work and then you can kind of slide this back and forth until you have it come up in the whole screen so you see like I, I i could kind of make that work there but i have to lose some of the border so um you know you can you can play around with this this is but if you want to you know make it easy on yourself always take your now you're going to bring it down to zero here right now i can i can go like that i mean i don't know why i would but you know sometimes you you have to, but you know, to make life easy on yourself, when you're taking your footage, keep your phone sideways, make sure your camera on your phone, you know, goes sideways. Sometimes you can hold your phone wrong and it, uh, <laughs> and it, and you know, you know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, you have to kind of tilt your phone up correctly so that whatever little, you know, G geode or whatever you call it inside the phone knows what direction it's aimed, you know? Um, and if you ever do get into making YouTube shorts, you'll have to go into this mode and you'll have to film an upright position, but we, we won't, we'll talk about that more maybe in a second video if I ever make one. Okay. So I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to click out of this and I just didn't change anything. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to click out of stuff here. What did I do? <laughs> I'll click out until it runs out of things that I tried to fix here. <clears throat> doesn't even matter at this point. <clears throat> okay, so let's go along the timeline here and see if there's anything else that might be new. So just basically scenes. This is a long scene because I'm kind of walking around the boat and talking. Uh, and some wavy here. Okay, so towards the end of the video here, you can see that on the timeline down there, there's black coming up, you know, so I have a blank I have a blank. Now, if I press on the, I'll just remind you here, if I press on the, this, it'll give me an option, blank or video photo, okay? Now, this black right here is blank, because sometimes it, you want to have blank. Oh, let's watch it. Okay, so by now, you should, um, you should, you know, at least have an idea of how I just did that little transition, right? So I, I did a fade transition out of the scene. I, I kind of did it long, I think. I, I brought it up to 2.5 to have it kind of slowly fade out. What? Okay. That tells the viewer, you know, so there's something a little different going on. <clears throat> and it goes into the blank. And then I use my text. And I have two layers of text. And you can see I staggered them so that they come in at different times on the timeline. So first coming up on comes up first, right? And then brings up backwaters and back roads. Now they're both on the screen. Now coming up, leaves this up on, leaves the screen. Backwaters is still there and then it leaves the screen, okay? Now this, this will take a while for you, you know, I promise. <laughs> it took me a long time to kind of you know, do this quick. You have to sit there and play around with it if you want to do these different type stuff. You know, it's all, you know, you got to play around with the timing. 
but eventually you'll get it if you if you, you play around with it enough. So, okay, so now I'm doing kind of a what's coming up next blank. I come into, I'm going to make a video about Martin, do an interview with him. It's a video I'm working on now, actually. And I have some text in there. I have a transition. And then I have another one. I have some screens. I think I have, okay, I have uh, some text. So there's not much more going on here. There's a couple of, okay, I do another one of these staggered text bars. Let's watch it. In desperation, I turn to the one and only thing I could think of, super glue. Would that work? It was my last chance to get the engine running. <laughs> okay, so sometimes I put, put funny little endings there. Um... You know, ask people to subscribe to your channel, that remind them, you know, and uh, or to like it and subscribe and thumbs up and comment and all that. I'm bad at that. I, I don't do that as much as I should. So that's pretty much the video there. Um, oh, yeah, I think we're just going to go down the, the toolbar here. So I showed you Canvas. I've already showed you music. You know, you, you, you should have the basics of music. Um, I think I showed you stickers, how stickers, you know, come up and down. Um, I've shown you text. Now, filter. I don't use filter much. You know, you can play around with that, but, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't use it I, because I don't want anything. I don't want to be too fancy with my videos. I don't think the subject matter lends itself to being fancy. Um, you know, the subject matter, I, mostly for me is like, you know, budget adventures, shanty boats, scooters, stuff like that. And if you think about it, that's, lends itself to a very simple lifestyle. And, you know, I try to anyways present it that way, you know. And uh, and and so the style, you know, the, the video making style should, you know, ideally match that to be kind of a simple editing, simple video making style to fit the simple subject matter of the videos, if that makes sense. If you were doing flashy stuff for the kids, you know, it'd be a totally different thing. You might want to use effects and filters and all that, but I, I've never had to, but you know, you could play around with that. Maybe, maybe you'll make it work. And if you do, you know, send me a note, let me know how you did it. I'd be interested. So I've, I've showed you the picture inside picture. You know how that works. The pre-cut, you know how pre-cuts work because you know, if, if I clicked on this, la if I held my thumb down, it would bring me to this and then I can click on pre-cut and it would allow me to mess around with the, the length of this scene. Um, so that's, you know, pretty self-explanatory, I think. I showed you the split. Now, the, the delete is always a handy thing to have. It's kind of like the backup arrow. You know, you can get get yourself into a rabbit hole that's not working, you know, or you just, you don't understand, you, you know, someplace you can't get out of, <laughs> you think you can't get out of it. Uh, just delete it and start over. You know, it's real easy. Um, background, let me remind myself of the back. Okay, the backgrounds, the, this is another one of those fancy things that, um, you, you probably can make work if you want to, uh, br you know, brand your style and your channel, you know, so that we were talking about earlier in the video. I know I don't mess with it much. I think I might have used it once or twice just for something, but uh, typically I don't use this, this tool much. But if you do, you know, and you find a cool, you know, share with me. Um, here's another thing that I probably should use more. I know that Martin on another time, another place, which, you know, was in this video I'm sh using to show you how to do this. He uses a lot of, of speed, you know, so you can take your, your scenes and you can, you can speed them up or slow them down. Okay. So, so if I wanted this last scene to go half speed, I could, I could sit there and mess around with it on the, on the timeline, right? Like, you know, this is something, just bring it up, play with it, you know, sometimes it works, like, you saw how, when I was talking about having my camera on the front of the boat, you know, I used a lot of cut scenes to shorten, shorten that, um, you know, that 10 minute long kind of bringing the boat around, well, another way to do that, it's a style thing, you know, and sometimes it, it's nice to have, is, you know, you, you watch Martin's channel, and sometimes he'll have his camera filming him, um, working on his boat and he'll have, he'll let the camera run for who knows, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour or something. And then he'll take that scene and he'll just speed it up with this, with, he doesn't use InShot. He uses something very similar, but it's not InShot. 
and he'll just he'll just speed up the scene, you know, so that that twenty minutes all of a sudden can pass in, um, you know, a minute. So speed, uh, I I use it once in a while. I always forget it's there. It's a style thing. I should use it more. I think I will use it more in the future. Um. So yeah, probably got the gist of that. Um. Then, let's see. What we got here. Okay. Um, animation. Now you know how that works. That's for. That's that that's that mostly is used for text, bringing text in and out, without it just popping up on the screen without any fade, right? So animation, cropping. Um, I never use cropping. I I don't I don't. It might have an application, but I've never needed to use it. Um, opacity is how I pronounce that. That's more of that kind of. Let's just bring this down. So there's nothing There's nothing on the screen here. Oh, okay. So you can kind of blur things out. If you, I guess if you were trying to do something, you know, like, you know, I, don't, I could see how this could be used as a style thing, you know. Like you're looking through a blurry, foggy window maybe or something. So, you know, that could be fun to play with. Volume, you understand that. I brought the volume down to 15% in this scene because the truck was loud, you know, when the camera's outside the truck when I'm filming wavy here. And so if I left it up to 100%, it would, you know, it would be annoying to the viewer. So I brought it down to 15%. Uh, voice effect. I have played with that a little bit. Um, I In the future, I might do it with wavy's voice. So basically, <laughs> let me just show you, let me show you an example here. So, um... If I was, uh, here I am talking, right? If I, I'm going to click, click into that. And I'm going to use voice effect. Let's see what it sounds like if, you know, with this one. So I was hoping to get all this done before noon and it's 12.03. <laughs> so I was hoping to get all this done before noon and it's 12.03. <laughs> So I was hoping to get all this done before noon, and it's 12.03. So I was hoping to get all this done before noon, and it's 12.03. So I was hoping to get all this done before noon. <laughs> okay, guys, you get it, the idea. Um, if you ever get InShot Pro, it gives you a lot more versions or um, options for that, you know, which I suppose could be fun. Um, <clears throat> replace, I, I'm i not even sure. Let me, let's, I'll click on it. Um... I don't even know. So it's it's something to do. It's 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 a time saving tool, but uh I've I think I've just found other ways to do it and so I've never had to use it. Duplicate, same thing. If you know you can save time kind of like the split tool, but I've never used it either. Reverse, I've never used it. Rotate. The only time you'd ever use rotate is if you took a scene or you took a picture. And for some reason, it was upside down. I had it happen once or twice where I was like riding my scooter and I was holding my phone wrong. And I, and it, you know, it took this, it, it didn't know it was flipped upright and it took the entire scene upside down. Well, you could just, you could just rotate it. See, I could, I can flip this upside down if I want to, you know. So, you know, it's, it's a nice thing to have. Okay. So is there anything else? What is freeze? Oh, okay. Like, there is flip. What is flip? Okay. If you want, um, sometimes, you know, you want to have a mirror image. You want to have it come from that side or that side. I never use it, but I can see where it could come in handy. Freeze. Freeze. Let's, let's see what it does when I freeze that. Oh, okay. So it, that's if you wanted, if you wanted to, uh, freeze that scene for some reason you wanted the viewer to look at something closely for a second you know i never use that either but i can see where it could come in handy so i'm gonna back out of that undo freeze there okay so all right i think i went down the toolbar there um i guess that's all i can show you for now <laughs> this has gone pretty long i'll be a surprise if anyone watches this entire thing but we'll see um <clears throat> If you have any questions, email me. I put my email address at the bottom in the description of all my videos. I'll put it in the description of this video. And uh, 
you can email me and then, you know, from there we can even, I, we could text each other if you're, you know, want it to be a little more convenient or something. But, you know, I would like to, uh, help people chronicle their adventures. I think it's really important. It's been, it's been really fun for me to do it and I enjoy it for the most part a lot sharing stuff that I've, that I love to do with other people, like-minded people. And, you know, that's kind of the magic of learning how to chronicle your trips, you know, and connect, it's, it's a way to connect with other people. So that's why I'm making this video is to hopefully give other people the tools to do the same. So, okay guys, um, I have prattled on a lot here and let me know if this works for you, if you have any questions and I will catch you guys later.